It was around near the end of 2010 when I first discovered Blaze Blue for the very first time. Um, I, I'm a writer. Well, I'm not a very good one, <laughs> but and I'm not a published one at that. But I do love to write stories, and I do like you know just to make characters and wa like just wind them up and watch them go. <laughs> and at the time, I was very, very unsure what to do. Um, every story I've written at that before, you know, 2010 wasn't very good. I've always picked cool things I liked and just threw into a vat and see what happened. And more often than not, they didn't come out all too well. And it was very frustrating. You know, usually you improve over time. You know, after you've written a bunch, you get better and improve. Um, but before all that, I was very frustrated myself. It's like something I wanted to do, like really wanted to do. And I just couldn't do it right for the, for the life of me. And no matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't get a good angle. I, whatever story I've written was terrible. And I just got frustrated myself and just gave up like time and time again. And it was painful to go through because I really did like to write. And it was something I was passionate about. I still do it to this day. But it was something that I was never good at and I hated myself for it. <laughs> but that's when I'm brown about near the near the end of 2010 where i discovered a video actually it wasn't even when i discovered the video um it was a video i discovered around back in 2008 no around 2009 and it was a music video it was you know how people upload those video game music videos there was a video from a youtuber i liked and his name back then was the art talker flame and i used to watch his live his countdowns and then he um he used, used to upload music videos as well on his, um, you know, just like top music and video games, or whatever. And there was one that got my attention. It was um, a video about awakening the chaos. And the moment I heard, I didn't watch the video, but I saw the thumbnail and it had like a um, new 13 on the cover on the thumbnail. And I was like, huh, that character looks cool as hell. And like, I decided to watch the video and listen to music and awakening the chaos it was like pretty much the first, my first exposure to plays, but like, the, that video was my first exposure to Blaze Blue in general, you know. Um, and I was like, "Huh, I want to discover more." So I, you know, went out of my way, and I, I remember seeing something about. Um, back then, I played a little dark, um, Dark Stalkers, but I never really got good at it. But um, I remember seeing Felicia from Dark Stalkers, and then it, funny enough, I um, looked more about her, and I found Tao, and I learned that she was from Blaze Blue. <laughs> And I was like, oh, man, she was from that, vi she's a um, character from that game. She looks interesting. Like, that game I just learned about the other, <laughs> the other day. And so after a while, I just started doing more research. And I was like, huh, I got to play these games. Nobody really talked about Blaze Blue all that much back. Well, they, people did, but it wasn't really talked about all too much. But I found it interesting. Like, I, I liked the way the characters looked. I liked the way the game, the games looked good. Because um, during that time, there weren't that many 2D games that were out. And I wasn't really that good at 3D type of fighters anyway. And Street Fighter was out at the time, like Street Fighter 4. But it's not that I don't, it's not I don't like Street Fighter 4. It's just that it's not that I don't like it. It's just I'm not very good at it. And I, it just never grabbed me like it used to. At best, the most time that Street Fighter has ever grabbed me before 2010 was the original Street Fighter 2, no, Street Fighter 2 um, Turbo Hyper Fighting. And I was way back in the SNES. Um but right as then I started um you know getting um I was get I was went to um I went to a GameStop and I couldn't find a single Blaze Blue game to save my life. I was thinking man this game I gotta find it somewhere and then I found a used copy of Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger and it was the last copy on the shelf and I was like oh can I can I get this it was, it was super cheap too it was about five um five four dollars and I tried to get it. There's some kid who came in and wanted to get it from me first. And while he was talking to his mom, when he's pointing the game, I, I quickly bought it, snuck out the store. And I was like, holy crap. <laughs> and then the as I got the story, he was like, where did the game go? Where did the game go? <laughs> it was just a funny experience, too. I was like, man, I got to get this game for this kid, does it? The kid gets it. And, and so when I got back home. There I was, my PS3 that barely worked, but I was like, you know what, I I want to play Clammy Trigger, you know. It was one of the very few fires I actually had 
you know, at the time, because I really wasn't that big in the fighting games. I mean, I played some, but I wasn't really that big until I actually, you know, until I started playing in Blade Blue. But the point is, after I started playing Blaze Blue and I started going through all the story modes and all the characters, I was like, man, it, get, it like the thing is like my I have I was in a like a writer's block at the time. I was in a rut. I couldn't understand it. You know, why am I not getting fresh ideas? And no matter what I tried to to do, you know, I never got any inspiration or anything good from it. But when I started playing Blaze Blue for the very first time, something sparked into me. You know, I was like, whoa, I got I got ideas I can use from there. You know, I didn't want to just, you know, copy and paste Blaze Blue. That was, wasn't my intention. But it gave me, you know, an idea. And a, it, made me a, it, it got me back in the writing. Because something about the story was just like, huh, this is actually a very good story for a fighting game. It was it was confusing. Yes, it was. But it was, under, I understood it. And I got, I had, it had great ideas that I could, you know, you know, see if I could branch off of. It didn't work at first, you know, throwing that excessive time travel and all that other wacky stuff wasn't the best idea, but I never, you know, decided to go that route. I decided, hmm, man, I need to work more on my characters. It was a fighting game, and, you know, the characters of a fighting game are super important to play through. And my main thing about my stories is that I try to emphasize the story over the characters, and when I tried to do that, the characters felt like they were just stereotypes, like, not stereotypes, they felt like they were just props instead of actual characters, and my stories actually became very terrible as a result. <laughs> And so I decided to go first and emphasize the characters and then try to do the story side by side. And that was a time where I created, um, it wasn't a time I created a story that I, I would um, make today. Um, there's a story I'm um, currently making, and it was definitely inspired by games of Blaze Blue, Guilty Gear, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's not like a, the, it's more like the characters were inspired by, not all of them, just a few, but without blaze blue i wouldn't have the idea to make those uh you know those stories but right at that time there was a story i um uh, i created at the time when i played blaze blue and it was it was sh centered around um, shinto mythology and stuff like that um since i haven't written the story in a long time i will give you a synopsis the story is basically about this high school uh, high school kid and he and his um he and, there's him and his brother and he, they have like um there's more to it, but it's, hard. it's I'm trying to explain it when I make it sound like stupid. But <laughs> but the point is, um, there's like a bunch of these um, Japanese Shinto gods that basically came from their um, from their realm, and basically trying to go through time, it kind of you know sapped them of their power, and it's it's hard to describe. It's it's it's, it's been so long because I haven't written it um, since um, I haven't touched that story in nine years, and but I, I retooled some stuff that you know and put in my re, um, newer stories, but it's not really the same as it used to be. But the point is, bunch of kids versus bunch of Shinto gods, all out war. It, it, it's more than that, but it was at the time it was more or less like Blaze Blue. I tried to implement a lot of things I liked about Blaze Blue into my stories, and it is it was like eh, it's not working, but I got good decent characters out of it. And I, over time, I started thinking, oh, I can improve. I can get better at this. And so I try to get better and better. And eventually, I have a story I currently have today, but which I won't talk about because it's, it's very, it's, it's, it, for me personally, I have never been good at explaining what I write, like with my stories. I try to pitch some, something to people, but I'm not very good at it. And I don't, I never felt comfortable about releasing some of the story that I don't even have finished yet, let alone convince someone to actually get a read of it. It's, I've I've never been that kind of person. Usually, then nobody would really care, you know. Even when I tried to pitch it, no one would really pay attention, and I just eventually over time, no one would just care, and I I didn't bother, you know, telling anyone about anything. I usually just write by myself because, you know, over time, you know, you sometimes you want to put something out there for people, and you know, it's a little disheartening that you know when no one actually pays attention, or at least someone would care, but you know, I. I've I've gotten over it over time, and I just accepted it, accepted for what I you know what I do, and just you know write in silence. And maybe one day something will happen for me. Um, and even then, it's hard for me to pitch the idea in the first place because I'm not, I'm not I was never a very good person. Like I always mess up things. I make things sound more like difficult than they are. Like a story can be as simple as a dude going down a street, and I gotta make it sound very complicated. I can't make a good synopsis from point A to point B with hook someone. But I do, you know, I do enjoy my writing. Um, but the point is, Blaze Blue 
without like without the characters and the storyline, I honestly wouldn't have gotten this far in my writing. Now, there's other factors in other series and shows and whatnot. I like to implement cool things. You know, I, I was the kind of person. It's like Gurren Laga. You know, that show pretty much works on the rule of cool. My stories, I like like there's like plot points and junk I like, and I just throw on the stew and stir it around. But I have to you know try to find a way to connect them and emphasize on them so they won't just sound like oh I'm just being cool for the sake of being cool. That's all there is to it. No, I want like my stuff to have substance, so they will seem cool, but within context, it's just being cool to be cool. Now there's nothing wrong with being serious like that. It's just that. I was never good at that. I mean, it's, it's like Guilty Gear runs on that, really. I mean, when you actually think about the plot, Guilty Gear, it's all over the goddamn place. And, you know, to be fair, only two, only three, three, four, five characters even matter in the whole series. You know, the main characters, really. They only, they're only the ones that matter, you know, while the other characters are going off doing their own thing. And I never really liked that approach. I don't hate the Guilty Gear story at all. I just say I never liked that approach. Like, I want everyone in the story to be important in their own way. You know, sometimes that's a bit like it's like too many cooks in the kitchen or something like that. Like, yeah, something like that. But like, I want everyone to be important in their own way. I like to, you know, you know, give characters some importance and, you know, have them help out in the plot. You know, I've never liked just leaving characters in the background unless they were like, you know, AKA, either they were just a background character, like, like, a, like, like a little girl, let's say a little girl who just doesn't contribute nothing to the plot she's like a little girl of a daughter of a mother or whatever like just just some village girl or whatever some random she doesn't contribute to the plot and so she's the background character i'll keep or if the character's already dead but they don't have no importance in the plot other than saying hey this character had a parent that passed away and they had nothing to do with the plot that's what i use for background characters you know like if i if i have a character i want them to be important in at least some way so they won't feel like a waste you know i never like wasting my characters on anything unless they just are like you know, like I never like having everybody just be straight up pointless in a, in a story. And sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes, sometimes it could come off wrong and then you have too many people. Like that's how Blaze Blue kind of became an essential fiction because everyone had their own time to shine and, you know, it kind of got too much. And, you know, I can understand that. That's why I got to keep everything limited. But the point is, without Blaze Blue, I honestly would have given up writing. Like it's, it's just. The characters, and you know what, I, you know, people rip on the story of Blake with being convoluted, complicated, yada, yada, this, yada, yada, that. You know, I can understand that. I can understand you being turned off by the story because it's not straightforward and understandable. I can completely understand that. But I have never felt so emotional about a fighting game in my life other than Blaze Blue. At all, you know. Like, I played the game thinking it was just going to be some, you know, 2D fighter, just et cetera, et cetera, like the ones I played before. Like, there was not that many games out. And, you know, all these fighting games, to me personally, after a while, like, there's like a dark age between, like, like years prior to everything, like, everything started to get stale. There was nothing else to play out there. You know, when Street Fighter came, you know, Street Fighter 4 came out, everything was like, oh, my God, new fighting games are coming back. But And there were more, but there really wasn't anything new, you know, to catch my attention. And, you know, even Street Fighter 4 didn't grab my attention all that much. I played it. But it's just something I wasn't, you know, I'm not deep into like I used to. And, you know, I didn't really like to play all that many fighting games all that much because I was never good at them. I'm still not good at them, but, you know, I wanted to play more to get better. Um, you know, just just to have fun by myself. Sometimes it's like playing fighting games by myself. But when Blaze went through the scene and it threw me off to how much I like the characters, how much I love their voice acting, how much I love the story. How much I wanted to see how things, you know, went off. And, you know, even though Clarity Trigger was not the not the best way. Like, it's like, it's like Clarity Trigger was, like, intentionally made with holes missing in it. So it can be answered by other games, which is, you know, I can. After playing a lot of Kingdom Hearts, you kind of get used to that at some point. But over time, it's just, man, I was interested. You know, this whole idea of time looping over and over again until someone gets right. Like the whole Groundhog Day kind of thing. It was interesting, you know, it was interesting to me. It was a good hook. And I was like, holy crap, this is actually kind of cool. You even get like bad endings and, you know, the canon endings and you know, see what happens to this character in this situation, how these characters relate to these characters. And, you know, even though Blaze Blue has, you know, some iffy stuff, it was, to me personally, it's a good story for a fight game. And, you know, over time, it got more convoluted and crazy because Mori wants to, wants to, something makes me suffer. <laughs> but I never at one point thought that I hated this game you know at one point i never thought that blaze blue would have affected my writing in a negative way now i like to say that because you know more or less i try to you know put a lot of things into my stories and i try to 
because I and I want to emphasize on the things, but at the same time, it feels like it's a little bit bloated. Sometimes I swear I feel too bloated, and it just feels like it's just like oh, it's too much to take in, and I can deal with that. Like that's what Blazewood did to me at one point. But at one point, I never thought that this was a dumb or terrible idea or something like that to watch. Uh, I mean, to play Blaze Blue. I never once thought that I regretted like coming back to writing after playing Blaze Blue. Like you know, you know, I do have iffy stuff. I I used to have problems, of, you know, talk about plot points of the games and junk like that. Be like, oh, this should have happened. This should have happened. These characters, but. I started to think more after I made those videos about Platinum Subaki and New. It's like, do I really hate these characters? Or do I dislike these characters? I never used the word hate in those videos. I said dislike. I mean, I may have said hate at one point, just but I'm probably been babbling at the mouth. But I don't hate any of one of these characters. Like they have, like I do have beef with some of them. But at one point, I never said I hated them. And even like characters I don't like all that much. I can't truly bring myself to hate someone like Subaki Selica. I mean, sorry, Subaki Noel. Sorry, Subaki Platinum and New. I never want. I you know I like them in their own ways. Even if I don't like some of their characters, sometimes they're always there. Were always something that hooked, like you know, got me to those characters. I mean, if I like if I didn't like those characters, I wouldn't have made those videos in the first. Like if if I if I truly hate those characters. I would have never made those videos in the first place. I was never the kind of guy to just rip on someone, something, and be extremely mean, um, p um, pure evil about it. You know, I mean, I will rip on stuff and try to be comical about it, but I want, I never like to kind of, oh, I hate this and be brutal about it. I never liked doing that. I mean, even if I did that, I probably did that like a couple times unintentionally in my videos, but I never wanted to actually say I hate this and this is garbage. I hate it. People who hate like this should hate it. Like, no, no, I never liked doing that. I never like forcing my beliefs on others either, and I've I honestly never like doing that because it's not fair when someone else does it, and it definitely isn't fair when I do it. I mean, I would say something's a gar um, garbage dumpster fire, and I did say that about a couple of you know about Subaki a couple of times, right? I did do that. I'm not gonna lie and say I did that, but at one point I never said I truly hated her. You know, I try to say these things just to be comical about it. I don't want to be like come off as an asshole. I don't like coming off like that. I. I'm not, you know, the friendliest. I'm not really a harmful, mean person. Really, I'm not. I try to be chill and cool about everything I do, and you know, even if I'm not, even if I do it unintentionally, I do apologize and say, you know, but I do like to respect other people's opinions. And you know, it's, you know, if, if someone's willing to hear my opinion, I should be able to, you know, let them hear me out too. You know, you know, I, I want I, if I if I want them to hear me, I want to hear them back. You know, to see what they think about a certain subject. And that came to a head when I made my other Subaki video. And I, you know, I said, you know, about certain things I didn't like about her. And people came up and said, yeah, but, you know, I like her because of this. Or I like her because of that. And it did the same thing with a new video. And I liked her because of this. And she, you know, and I started to think, like, yeah, you know, that's that's a good thing about different opinions. There's always someone else there to, you know, make you see things through a different light. Even if you don't agree with them, you know, there's always good insight. And I started reading those comments that I had, and I was like, huh, you know what? I could definitely understand why you think this. I could definitely totally understand. Me personally, I don't, but I get it, you know? I can understand and I get it why you guys think this way. And I could definitely, you know, breaking it down, I could definitely see, oh, I get it. I can see how it is, but, you know, it's just something that's, you know, stuck with me. It's like, oh, this character is just this, and this character is just that. But over time, it's like, okay, I get it. I can understand what you mean. I can totally understand what you get. I get you. And that's like, yeah. Like if I didn't like, if I was like mean and super mean, but I would just like outright say it in your face, and I, I would feel bad afterwards because, you know, I want to be that kind of person. I just say these. I like to, you know, I like to put my opinions out there, especially to someone who will listen. And if they don't agree with me, I would like to hear their feedback as well. You know, if it's friendly enough, I don't want to just straight up hate and anger and you know meanness towards it. But you know, criticism is definitely criticism is a blah, my bad. Criticism is definitely allowed. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not the perfect person. I definitely should be making these videos because I'm not the best person. I stammer a lot. I, I stammer a lot. I, you know, I run on about things that don't matter. See, I'm doing it now because that's what we talk about my stories to Blaze Blue. But, you know, this kind of ties into the whole story thing. Um, But, yeah, I'm not the best person to be, you know, doing these videos. I mean, I, I even tried to see if anyone else could do these for me. And... You know, I never after all these years, I think maybe I should make these blaze blue videos and um, I should make, you know, I just just talk, you know, 
most of these videos are just me talking and just putting a picture in the back, PNG in the background, just to, because I'm not really much of a talker, per se. I'm not really that much of a talker, and I feel like when I say things, I just babble on, and, you know, they're dumb. I feel like people are not going to listen to me because, you know, all my words, at the end, at the end of the day, it's just, I shouldn't even try. <laughs> and that's what I felt about when I wrote my stories, that... I want to have to I have want to have ideas and stuff to see what people see about and what they want to talk about. And if they enjoy it, that's a bonus. If they have something to criticize about, I can understand their feedback. You know, feedback is definitely appreciated. I do. I do enjoy feedback because I definitely want to improve and get better at things. And, you know, Blaze Blue was the thing that opened me to the door to get a, be a better writer. At least at least I've gotten I think I've gotten better. I'm not really that much of a great writer, but I've had. I have a, I'm a hell of a lot better than I used to be. And I, I do have to thank Blaze for that. And without, honestly, without Blaze I wouldn't really be writing today. I probably would be, but it wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be, you know, actually anything decent. And one day, I do want to get my writing out there because I do want people, like, the people to see my ideas. You know, I have cool ideas, but I feel so restricted into what I can do because, A, you know, I don't have the best of equipment to even put writing out there, really. Um, B, I you know, I, I'm i I'm hesitant on doing stuff like in the first place because, you know, people plagiarize stuff all the time. And, you know, if someone will actually find a way to you know, plagiarize my work, I just, I mean, I can do with inspiration, but outright plagiarism, I just, I have, I've heard so many horror stories about that in the past that it just makes me nervous. You know, it makes me nervous that, man, I put all this work into stuff and somebody's just going to steal it from me or something like that. And I got hesitant over that. If they found it good enough to steal it, you know, that'd be, that'd be flattering at first, but <laughs> it's not really something I want to deal with and see, I just am extremely nervous about what people will think. I mean, I would deal with feedback, but at the end of the day, I just feel a very nervous and people are like, Oh, this is terrible. You know, and I can understand that, but you know, I'm, I can't help with that. I can't help that feeling and think, damn, I could have done better at that. And I just, I would pretty much be back at where I started, you know, not being able to have confidence in myself to make this story or having any confidence enough to get it out there and, you know, see what people think about it. And, you know, I could deal with feedback. It's just I, I have that innate fear that something's I'm going to deal with here something that I'm not going to not going to like all that much. And, you know, it, it happens all the time, you know, but usually there's people rabbit people out there. But for overall, when I make these videos, I get positive, somewhat positive feedback. People talk to me. I never really get that. Um, I really put my thoughts out there. Like I, I have, I'm like I have a page on like um, Facebook and junk like that. And like. Usually when I get my ideas out there, it's more or less, it's like 25% actual feedback or say 5% um, people ignore it. And I decided, you know, to make these vi Blaze Blue videos because no one else ever did so. And even though I sometimes, I believe that I'm saying the wrong thing, I do believe these things that I put out there. Um, most of the time I make these videos are just me blabbing at the mouth. You know, I just like to blab on because... I honestly don't know any other way how to make these videos. I, I was never very good with the informative stuff, and I was never good at being being a whole scripted writer. I I, I even though I like to write, I have never liked writing scripts, and um, I hated it because I always would have to go back and change it in mid video. And sometimes I ad lib it, but I feel like it doesn't make me be as free as I want to be. I have to constantly look at the words and say it as I'm reading it and. I never liked that. I more like just to talk and while the, have the video run while I talk, like to have the recording equipment run while I talk, and it's that's what I've been dealing with. And no one has called me on that yet. And you know, if I, eventually someone will. And it's like, oh, you're someone actually no, someone actually did. It's like you're just rambling. It's two videos too long, and I can totally understand that. I, I you, you know what? Thanks for the feedback. You know, I can deal with that. I can understand why my voice. Sometimes I, I try to improve it my own way, but even then, I just. I can't help that kind of thing. <laughs> but the point is, um, Blaze Blue did help me with my writing. It really did. And even though, you know, it's because of the characters and the stories that I deal with these characters. Like, what, like without them, I wouldn't have gotten, you know, opened the floodgates to other great stories that I've gotten inspiration from. For example, um, Neon Genesis Evangelion. As a kid, I have never thought too much of Evangelion because I never really felt all that, you know. I didn't really, I always thought that... Shinji was whiny, Asuka was a super annoying, Ray was a nothing person, but as I got older and I watched Evangelion again and went through the whole series, I can totally see it from a completely different, you know, vision. 
Because Shinji, I can understand his plight for, you know, attention and wanting to be recognized by people. I can understand Asuka's ability to push away people because she doesn't want to get hurt, but at the same time, wanting attention. Um, you know, she wants, you know, wants to be acknowledged by someone because, you know, that's pretty much her whole, she was, that was her whole life. I understand Ray being about, um, talking about her, um, her, you know, her idea of like, you know, just saying, well, my life doesn't matter because I could just be replaced anyway. And I do feel for all those characters, including the other characters in Evangelion. And, you know, honestly, without me discovering these medium, without Blaze Blue discovering, you know, learning more about these mediums would have really been to happen. I would have never thought about this because I would have never been back to writing again. I've got inspiration for Metal Alchemist, Full Metal, yeah, Full Metal Alchemist, because that's one of the great, one of the greatest anime I've ever seen, and I've loved the story for it. I, hell, I even like I got inspiration from a lot of things. Um, the series cooling Yu Gi Oh Five Ds, and you know, it's a great series. I do love the great series, and it gave me a lot of inspiration. It's just, I thought I started to think, what if I have never saw Blaze Blue or played the series? Because usually, like when I see cool ass characters in a series, I get attracted to that series, but. I was wondering, what if I never did play Blaze Blue? There was Guilty Gear to fall back on, but without Blaze Blue, I wouldn't have gotten a great appreciation from Guilty Gear either. I would have never went back to writing. I would have given, given up right there and then, because it was at a point where I just didn't want to do anything anymore. It was a, at a point where I just didn't have the confidence in myself to actually get better in writing. And it was at a point where I just, like, I'll never be good at this. I'll never get better. I'll never make any good characters. I will suck and continue to suck. And honestly... It's just funny that how, you know, this the story about this red <laughs> red jacking edgy man, you know, taking on the literal government. <laughs> you know, it's just funny how Blaze how far Blaze was come and how much us unlikely series that I thought the series would be guiding me this far as it is. I've been in Blaze Blue for eight years now. I mean, it was we got near the tail end of 2010. So I'm counting as eight years because it just it hasn't just become January at that point. It hasn't, it hasn't reached December of this year yet. So it hasn't, you know, it hasn't, you know, it's not really eight, um, nine years yet. But um, I, I can't believe how far it's come. And I'm happy about that. I really am happy about how Blaze will help me out this far. And I hope, I hope I can improve and get better and eventually get my stuff out there.